two guys who are on fire this weekend. Correa hasn't put a foot wrong. Looks like one of the most confident drivers on the grid, making an announcement that he's he's here to take you know he's take over, not take part. And he goes up against Kuba Piszkowski, who had an interesting one more time earlier on with Zakro, but looks strong as well. Here we go, another massive battle here in the top 16 of the Drift Masters European Championship: Portugal versus Poland, Correa versus Piszkowski. Look at this, Correa straight off the line, no messing around. We wait for that late initiation though from Correa, absolutely nails it. Piszkowski knows exactly what Correa is going to do, but he just hasn't got the pace start to fall away as Correa holds onto it. Look at this on the throttle, nice and early. Flames licking out the back of the car as Correa puts foot to floor. Pushkonski now starts to find the pace, starts to find the back end of that E92 BMW. Oh, Pushkonski getting himself a little caught up now. Shortcut in the circuit, almost went two wheels off the circuit, trying to get onto the side of the back end of that BMW, but no way can he catch Diogo Correa as Correa puts hammer down across the line. Wow. I mean, this guy. I mean... As we said yesterday, he arrived here this weekend with a, with a mission. With In his head, he has won this event because he hasn't made a mistake. No wavering, no sh lack of confidence. Regardless of the temperature, the setup, he's nailing lap after lap. Pishkonski, I think, got surprised by the pace here. When they came down that first hill, he's like, how is this car so fast? Pishkonski's car is no slouch. This is a very, very capable machine. But Correa, not only is he fast, but he's accurate. He's in all the zones. He's everywhere he needs to be. And this is where Kuba makes a mistake. Goes too tight on the corner, which means he doesn't gain enough momentum out of the corner to make an attack on Correa. Correa takes that advantage. He doesn't notice it's happening, obviously. And he absolutely flies through the last couple of sections. Looks like Kuba again cuts the last corner. The advantage to the Portuguese man. I mean, wow. I mean, Correa just looks on rails. He has that qualifying line dialed to a T. He's not putting a foot wrong, and I think he's putting the chase drivers in a really awkward place. This one's going to be interesting as we swap them around. We look down to the back end of the grid once again. I see what is going on, see if these guys are making their way. Yeah, we see them down the back end of the circuit now, just trying to cool the cars down, get some fresh air through them radiators. And they'll head back to the line. Don't forget, they do have that two-minute time allocation to get back to the start line once the run is over. And they're using it because these oh, cars are getting to temperatures of 110, 15 degrees water temperature. And the problem is with the electronic units in the car, they're monitoring temperatures constantly. And if they think something is going to cause terminal engine failure, they'll shut the car down. So the drivers want to allow the cars to cool as much as possible before the second run because they're coming in with those, you know, cars boiling at the end of the first run. Now, Pishkonski's in the lead, Correa's in the chase. Now, we've watched Correa be a phenomenally good in the lead position in qualifying. Now we're going to test his chasing ability. That's the full package. You can do a run on your own, sure. Great, fantastic. But can you get close and adapt to a different driver? That's the difference between a good qualifying run and the top of the podium. We're about to see if he's got the stuff to do it. Well, I think he has got the stuff to do it, Dave. We pipped him a few years ago that he would be an up-and-coming driver, and it is going to be a restart. There was a clipped cone there from Kuba Pishkonski. And we do want to see these guys make a clean pass through that chicane. Now, for you guys at home that probably may not understand what that chicane is for, is because this isn't a drag race, Dave. He's not the first person to the line gets the win. We want to try and slow down that lead car from getting too much acceleration away from the start line so that there is a clean, fair battle. And as you can see here, as Kuba Pashkonski comes through that chicane, he does clip that cone, which means he isn't really using the chicane as it is designed. And um, we want to give the chase driver as much momentum, as much drive off the line to jump onto the door as they initiate. So we do restart them, they get back to the line, hopefully a clean pass this time. Absolutely, and hopefully a clean pass, and Pushkonski now will know that he can't go cut it just as tight. I know he's trying to get as much pace away as he can. He gets through cleanly this time as Pushkonski. Look at Correa, though, right with him, and Pushkonski now... Oh, oh, right on the back bumper is Correa as he fires in. And Correa looks confident, but has to back away a little bit, a little closer than he wanted to be. But now he's starting to reel in the Polish driver as they come down the hill. Look at Correa, he's right there. Closest we've seen anybody through this section as Correa holds on to Pushkonski as they come through. And Correa's right there. Now, can he time this transition perfectly? A little early, but he makes it work. Is he going to over-rotate? He does over-rotate. Goes too oh. close, but just about gets away with it. And we have to watch that lead run again, but it looks like Correa may have made a little bit of a... An error there, but let's have a look back at it in the replay. Correa now jumps in. Pishkonski looking like he's on rails now, using his experience, using that power to get across the line. Does a swing back the other way? We'll have to check out the replay. Wow, that was close. That was close. I'm not sure if that was an over-rotation. It was big angle through that hairpin, but going back to the first half of the run, Kuba Pishkonski was in exactly the same place. He had wheels over that piece of grass. Let's take a look. Look at this chase 
from Diogo Correa, though. Absolutely flying on and off the handbrake, balancing that car perfect. Look at how close he gets down the back end of the circuit. He's not messing around, kicks some dirt up in the face of the drone as he comes through there. Look at this. Now, let's take a watch at the lead car, see what happens here. He puts on big angle, he does hold on to it. It is wild, but he does keep drifting, Dave. Look at this. Oh, he tags the side. Now, I'm going to go as far as saying, is Pushkonski cutting that hairpin a little too tight? Judges wanted to see him wider, right? They wanted a midline through the hairpin. Did Pushkonski shut the door on Correa in the lead position? I think it's, you know, six of one, half dozen of the other because he's a little bit too tight. Correa makes too much of a wild dive. He's not in control of that dive. But look how close they are coming through that corner. And irregardless of the result, how hard are these drivers pushing for these wins? I mean, you would think any championship in the world, it heats up around top eight, top four. We're watching right from the start of top 32 now, all the way through, even Stevens battles down to the finest margins. And the judges are going to have a good look at this one. We'll get the result. We'll go back to Kevin afterwards. But um, as you can see, two, um, two drivers that are looking like they have no idea how that one's gone. We're about to find out. It is Correa getting the win and going through to the top eight. Pishkarski goes out. We're going to throw it back to Kevin O'Connell. Kevin, something weird went on at that hairpin. How did you guys see it? Yeah, correct, Dave. That was um, that was an awesome lead run by um, by Korea on his first run. He definitely came away with an advantage from that. Uh, but it uh, really, realistically, as you guys said, it all comes down to that defining moment on that second hairpin. Um, but if you look at that replay, you can see the Kuba is way offline. We wanted those drivers to be nice and wide around that hairpin, but Kuba slows absolutely drastically and Korea did so so well not to have impact there or to have a spin even so it was definitely a major major advantage to Korea there after that second hairpin. Kuba obviously this is not the result that you